I am unashamed. What about you? So, Dad, I noticed that uh, Mom made it back from yep. uh, from Texas. She was she was visiting um, Jeff. She loves to go over and visit Jeff and his crew. Of course, they're all coming you know, home. Well, the, you know why? The new show you did has got Jeff coming home, which I'm excited about. Yeah, you know why she she does that? Why is that? Because he's her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is the baby. Too. <laughs> yeah, she loves so Jep and his Jep's kids. Yeah, they're cool. by the way, you know, I think we mentioned it the other day, Jay. Someone that shucked out fifty thousand to help the children, save the children, have the children adoption. The you know what's what's the name of that? All God's children. All God's children. <laughs> you have a, you have trouble remembering that. There's a lot of yeah. We're all God's children. <laughs> all the, I need. It, it, but I like it because Dad always goes to help the children, which is a good thing. Yeah. Anyway, Jeff works for, as you know, those of you that are longtime listeners. Jeff works for a group uh, called All God's Children that works with orphanages, which, by the way, is a great uh, Bible. Um, driven idea to help orphans, you know, which is amazing. So yeah. apparently apparently the biggest item of the night, I found out from Mom, Jace, was the duck hunt that Mom donated on behalf of you and Dad. So yeah. that was uh, somebody shucking out 50K. To, well, uh, the culture worldwide. For culture, a good cause. The worldwide culture, not only do they have we slaughtered the unborn, the ones that do make it, are just discarded, and all God's children tries to get some people to adopt them. Yeah, because there's a lot of children that no oh, man, it just that, that, that they're alive. They chose to give birth to them, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. But you say what now? There's no family structure. They discarded by their mothers. Yeah. So there's a mighty throng of little children that need need a mom and a dad. Yeah, wars and things like that around the world. James yeah. one twenty seven. Yep. Religion that God, which I think that's the only place religion is mentioned in the Bible. You may be right. I think so. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Mm. Yep. That's a good one, too. If you, There you go. Because if you kept more spiritual pollution out of the world, you would probably have less orphans and right, just by association. So, so Dad, you mentioned yesterday when we didn't have the cameras rolling, but I, I wanted to explore it because I was curious. So Mom, <clears throat> a few years ago, bought one of these walk-in tubs. She saw your old college football teammate, Terry Bradshaw, uh, on one of his many advertisements, you know, Bradshaw's got a pretty good ad man. Yeah. He was uh he was rub a dub in the tub with the big bubble bath walk in tub. Walk in tub. So she got one and apparently she loves it, but you tried it when she was gone. Tell us tell us about that experience. Cause... I actually just walked up and looked up, looked at the thing <laughs> and I said, How does the water get on you? I said, Cause we got a we, we, we got a like a is it a door? A gate. Yeah, there's it, a door. You open the door. It's a locked door. <laughs> and you shut that behind you. You turn on the water. It's running in the tub below you. You're sitting up about three feet above the water and looking down there where the water's going. And you don't get down in the tub. Well, you'd have to reach down and get you some. What do you mean? <laughs> There's no shower. There's no water on you when the water gets in a well, tub. Well, why don't you just normally, get... <laughs> normally your butt is is taking on water when you're putting water in the bathtub. But I was raised taking my baths in a number three wash tub. Well, this is No water. Weird. This was rain water. Or water out of a well. Poured over in there, pretty, pretty icy, cold in the winter. But... Oh. I usually was about number five going in the tub. All my brothers and sisters were going Is in the tub. Is this outside? Was the tub inside? Outside. Or outside? In outside? the yard. So would they let it kind of warm up in the let sun? It where the sun would warm it up a little bit in a couple of hours and everybody bailing off. Well, I was number five, Jimmy Frank first, and Harold, Judy, <laughs> Y'all went Dan, in age the women. Order? You got to get back out of the way. They got the curtains around them. But everybody oh, so was you, going in the same tub. So you put curtains around it for privacy? For the girls. Yep, for okay. the girls. Okay. Oh, so y'all didn't have curtains for the guys. No curtains for the... No. Yeah. So the, here we are, and I'm looking at the water. 
I said, I'm going to try it. Miss Kay's gone four or five days. I went back in there. I said, I'm going to take a bath. I got in the thing and started to water. I had to reach down and splash them up on me. I said, so you're... I said this is the worst contraption <laughs> right, Phil, that I've ever seen. I asked this question three times. Why don't you just Could get you not where get the, the water, bottom of it? Get where like, the water why are is. You above it? Well, after 20 gallons of water, you're ankle deep. <laughs> In water, your feet's in the water, but you're sitting up here on a bench above it because it's for old people that can't get up, I guess, Miss Cave is well, I think, banging around. I, and I don't know. I'm not, I don't really an expert on this, but I think the concept is you, you put a lot more water in than you A get. whole you, lot. You got to get it all think the way. Think about sitting three feet high <laughs> and getting water up on your tail. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 I mean, then, you know, hot, the hot it. ran out right oh out. Oh, my after, goodness. The hot ran out at, after I got about 40 gallons in there. 40, 50 gallons. I need a bigger hot water. It seemed like we'd well, run, how does mom do it? If everybody did this, we'd run out of water. If you had filmed me taking that bath, <laughs> oh, well, boy. I forgot some soap or something, and I, I crawled out of it, which that was a feat. And I mean, I said, it's the one I didn't break a leg. Yeah. I crawled this, back in there. I had to soap. This thing was designed for safety. And it sounds like it was the most dangerous thing oh. you've done in a year. <laughs> but it sounds stressful. I said, I'll never do this. Out of shower, man. I'm, I'm sticking with the shower. <laughs> At least I've got water hitting my head and draining off oh, instead of goodness. sitting there waiting on it to come up. I'm going to have to ask mom <laughs> about how that's happened. But that was funny. Yeah, it was funny when you told it yesterday. It's so. been there a couple of years, but that's the first time I've taken a bath in it. <laughs> and last, I say. And last. <laughs> Take a shower from now on. Yeah, Just exactly. think about it. You pay money for it. Uh, probably a lot oh, of money. Look. What was this? Oh. Oh. Boy, I thought <laughs> we were being invaded <laughs> by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the air conditioner. Well, that's well, it. That's it for Dad. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. So, Jace, I was, um, I was at an event. I don't think it was my last one, but I think it was the one before when I was in Pennsylvania. And... um so this guy, he said they were big, they'd watched the show, and and so he's you know introducing me to his kids, and one of the boys was named Jace, and I said, "Don't tell me you named this kid after my brother." And he said, "Well, actually, yeah, we did. You know, Jace What's was wrong with that. Well, why wouldn't you want somebody to tell you that? <laughs> I mean, I just thought, okay. So he, uh, but he introduced. So I took a picture with him. I tried to find this one. I couldn't find it on my phone, but he. He he bears your name. I said, "Well, do you do you act weird? Uh, tell me some of your activities." But it wasn't. I guess your name didn't. He doesn't meddle to take. I asked him. I, I quizzed him about his. There's a there's a brotherhood in our world of people named the same name. I think there is. Oh yeah, I think I think you're right. So when I meet a Jay, I'm like, "Hey, we gotta." What's funny though to me is our names. We all got like shortened and changed over the years like because you were jason the whole time i grew up i was alan now it's jace al well, and some people are Will. making the return like like murray and Sa. Si, just a little warning about this show that's fixed to come out they half the time they call me jason oh really they yeah. go back <clears throat> and i say why, why are y'all doing that and they're like we just wanted to rebel <laughs> Because <laughs> I really don't like Jason. Because the only time somebody calls me that in the last twenty years is when Missy is like right. really wanting to make a point. Yeah, she she's like she usually throws them what my about, entire name. You get the middle. Yeah, that's what happens to me when yeah. I get Marshall Allen from Lisa. Usually that she's not happy. So, but Dad, you yeah. always were the nicknamer. But you, well, you know, you nickname people. I always assumed it's just you had this gift to do it. And Willie does it too. And I mean, like he just, he starts calling people by something different. Willie's usually making fun of him. You usually relate it to a physical attribute. Their mannerisms. Mannerisms. Yeah. Maybe where they're Phil, from. Phil, I think you do have a condition where you just don't like calling people by their real <laughs> given name. I, I, I've never figured that out. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Yeah, you just have But a, you've done it your whole life. Cause like, everybody has a quirk, and that, that's one of them. Yeah. Because they tell you, because most people, they'll introduce themselves. But then you immediately, like in that sentence, you'll say, I'm I'm Phil. They'll say, you know, I'm John. But then they'll usually, you know, where you're from. 
Well, I'm from New York. Well, then it's New York. <laughs> you call him New York, but he gave his name before where he was or, from. Or it could be something that happens, like like John from San Antonio, our buddy that was converted. He was a left winger, so so for a long time it was yeah. Here's the left winger that came to Jesus. Yeah. So it kind of becomes your background. Oh, you told me job. your story, and I said, so you're <laughs> you're having problem with the left wing ideology. He said, that's exactly wh- why I'm here. Yep. Yeah. He he requested a meeting. I said, well, come on in. So oh, he's you know, a great I forgot guy. his name, so cause he's there. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. We're gonna be. So he carried that name for about a year or two. That's right. But Finally, he can... it got back down to John. Yep, it's back to John. Yep, John's a good guy. I like it when Phil forgets the grandkids' names. He's like, "Hey, yeah. uh, what's that kid? Uh, who's this one? <laughs> you know, you look at these who's grandkids. They get they grown get grown so quick. It's like yeah. And I, and I look at them and I'm like, I said, I said that girl. I said, I said which one's that? And they said that's Stone's oldest daughter. I'm like, so you call her Frisky. And then you call her little sister, who looks a lot like her, Sage, you call her Little Frisky. Yeah. That's Frisky and Little Frisky. Yeah. And then, you know, so. So I started, I started down the road talking about names, because we're, we're in Colossians. And I don't know, I went, I went down a rabbit hole last Uh-oh. night in preparation. I like your rabbit holes, Jason. We usually get some and, good stuff out well, of Well, I don't know. You can, you can let me know if this was... From the Holy Spirit or just some delusion that I had? <laughs> well, you said you were but, very tired yesterday. But most people, if you say, what do you call yourselves as a follower of Jesus? Let's just put my theory to the test. What would be the common names? Go. Uh, Christians, disciples, mm-hmm. followers, heard that. Phil, do you want to opine on anything? Ambassadors. Oh, I like that, but I don't. I've never heard somebody say I'm an ambassador. No, unless we were in that text. It's, they should yeah. speak of themselves because I think it would help people understand. You're giving church. Them, you're you're church. giving them an identification. Yeah. You know your your uh, identity. Right. Believers. So why do you you represent Jesus on the earth? I said, bringing people together. It's a ministry of reconciliation between God and man. We're we're there as ambassadors to point people to Jesus. That's what, that's what, well, the, you, bet, the one who sent you, he's, you're, you're representing him wherever the, you are. The best part about the ambassador name is it this notion that you're really in another, from another realm, like oh, you're yeah. citizens of another country. And you're far beyond that's the best exciting part of uh, the little things they use now going to church. You're, you're far beyond that. On Monday, you're an ambassador for Jesus. On Tuesday, you are an ambassador representing Jesus. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you come together. You say, "Yeah, good. That's good." You're with the other. You're with the other ambassadors. You have a meeting, kind of get your plans worked out there, you know. <laughs> but the, the march is the march. We have to march forward as one. Yep. The body of Christ, and you're you're representing him. Ambassador was a pretty good word to use. It was a great word. Reconciliate. I agree, but y'all reconcile <laughs> the human race to Jesus. I would say, Jay's more practically that I don't necessarily like, but you'll hear members, church members, is another very common thing that people are called. Yep. But but well, y'all, membership uh, is man. That's a well, it's a whole other. Y'all fell into the trap. <laughs> Because well, we, look, we were trying to our, do. our viewers probably think this is set up, but it wasn't. They had no. You, you have no idea what I was fixed to say. No, I don't. I don't. But the number I don't one thing down you your said. Holes. Hold the, on, Jess. Let's take a break. So, Dad, what you're saying? Uh, as you every year you get a little older, the resurrection looms larger. No is, doubt. Is that a fair statement? <laughs> is a fair statement. <laughs> so what happens is on this earth, you know, we, we our bodies kind of start wearing out. And you know, as we get closer to the end, and there's some reasons why, uh, according to our friends at Omega XL, you have 360 joints, which says you made the point that it's almost a joint per day. They can go haywire on you, right? It's three one, one a day. One a day. Uh, all the way down, obviously, from the vertebrae down to your feet. And as you have your daily activity and your aging, your joints hurt. And, of course, it, it affects your sleep and everything else. So Omega XL 
has has studied this and has a great science behind it that helps us produce more SPMs, which keeps our joints healthy and rejuvenates them. So it's a great supplement. It comes from the pristine waters of New Zealand, um, and it comes from a green lip muscle. Uh, Dad and I take them inside, Mom. It's been very helpful uh, with the aches and the pains and the joints. Here's what you can do if you want to order them, omegaxl.com slash fill, omegaxl.com slash fill, or you can call them at 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. You buy one bottle, you get a second bottle for free. OmegaXL.com slash Phil. The number one thing you said, what was not number one, but the first thing you said? Christian. That's what people say. Now, do you realize that's only mentioned three times in the New Testament? Yeah, in fact... There's, well, I'm sure you're going to read it, but there's, it was one where it says they first started calling them that, right? In Acts, Acts 11, 26, I have it here. It says, uh, the this is in the second part of the verse. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now, the other two times is one mentioned by the King Agrippa when he said, he told Paul, do you think you can convince me to become a Christian in such a short time. Remember mm-hmm. that? Yep. And I'm not sure exactly where Probably that is. Acts 26 or so. somewhere in there. <clears throat> so you have those two. And then the other one is Paul says a quote, uh, obviously from this same kind of idea, but if you suffer as a Christian, yeah, I think it's in Peter, not uh, Paul. Peter, Peter says, if you suffer as a Christian, praise God. Or that well, you well I don't know what name. text it is, Jay. Why are you there? But, but but the term, well, the world started calling the followers of Jesus and the ambassadors. The world started referring to them as Christians. They were first called Christians at Antioch. So for I a long time, I say a long time for a, a pretty short period of time, people who saw. The followers of First Jesus. Peter one four, that they, they they just started calling them Christian, yeah, and it kind of stuck. But but throughout the Bible, Jay, throughout the New Testament, no, you're right. Christians Christians not used that much, right? Well, it's not, and and I figured out why. Four, First Peter four sixteen. Yeah, I wanted to read. If you that. suffer, I, I, I wanted to read that. Okay, but here Peter, it is. Uh, you want me to read it? Yeah, you read it. I can't. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Yep. That's well, what Peter said. yeah. So be, there's, in and of itself, there's no problem with the term Christian. Well, but the point is, but well, it's, I, it's I, a deeper than that. Well, I did a little study on this. I, I was I was amazed that the term Christian came from any other, you know. Back in the day, you were considered Christ's men. And that was basically what the government officials and the royalty deemed people that followed Christ. They, yep. were, they were Christ's men. They were, they were following a man. They were Christians. Right, yep. The problem with that is when you think about the origination, it came from the world looking that's right. When you look at actually, because I think that's why Peter, which is really, you make a case, because it says when they were called Christians there, well, who who has called them Christians? The people looking. The world. From, yeah, the world. And I think Peter was and saying, said, if you suffer ashamed. as right. a Christian, well, why would you be suffering? Because people in the world are saying, oh, you're a Christian. You right. see what I mean? Yeah. So in all three cases, <clears throat> it was used by the world. Well, the more I, I'd never it thought. Still I'd never, I, I'd never, it still is. It still is. I never thought about Well, a lot of people in the church call themselves Christians. Correct. Mm-hmm. But, which I'm not making a big thing about it because we follow Christ. Right. But it's way deeper than that. When you start looking at what the Bible calls us, and just just take Colossians, in which I lo- that's why I loved when you went down the ambassador ro- road. Yep. Because that would be a, <laughs> that would be a great that you're representing God. Yeah. God is using you to let Jesus out. But I'll just give you five that that I noticed. Now, one of them I've already named because it said the in Acts where it said the disciples were called 
Christians first at Antioch. So they were known as disciples first, which what is a disciple? It's a follower of. Yeah, if you look certain. it up, I think it says a learned follower, right. which is, yeah, you're following Jesus, but you're actually one of Jesus's scholars. You, yeah, you, someone he, who has committed time to. He's taught you, but just think taught, about yeah. that. I think that's. I think that's important. That that's deeper than just oh, I'm just a man following sure. or following believing in Christ or a Christian. Oh, I'm Christ man. You're you've studied at the feet and study on a in a present. A yeah, disciple infers <clears throat> that you are willing to go deeper. Follow to, to follow scholar or on, on just the, <clears throat> the overarching everything that that. The world calls us Christian and all that. The simple part, before he goes into us being ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation, reconciling people to God, it says, since then we know what it is to fear the Lord. Well, he just got through talking about the resurrection, the glorified bodies, which is an awesome, Second Corinthians 5. But you get right in the middle, then he shifts a gear and he said, since then we know what it is to fear the Lord. And here's the, the, the outcome of all that. Whether you call them Christians, whether you call them God's family, uh, you know, ambassadors, we try to persuade men. That's the overarching job yeah. of an ambassador. He's trying to persuade <coughs> exactly. we can get along. We, you know, they, we point people to the whoever sent you, ambassadors. Now we hear about it in politics, you know, but but Christianity is is based on the same format. Yeah, and the yeah. Great Commission. Ambassadors moving forward. I looked up ambassador in the dictionary, and it basically said messengers, messenger. Yeah, yeah, or representative. I've always viewed it as representative. Yep. Which well, I, in, in well, an, it's like an ambassador. Real to your point. I don't know if they, they got yeah. You know, there's a, there's a real called an ambassador. It's a oh, official well, Colossians just look, like think about it. What is an ambassador real? What is it? It do? It's a fisher of fish. It fishes. <laughs> it you ha it has a spooled up line and it's thrown, and you you have a fish bite and you really. You think it. that's why they call it that? I don't know. I just <laughs> popped in my head. And anyone who asks you, Peter said, if they ask you, you know, you you. For the, for the hope that you have, you you explain to them. Here's here's the way this works. Yeah. But I'm saying you're, you're ready is, to give an answer. You say, "Why do you? Who is Jesus? Why you why you why you follow him for? Are you nuts? <laughs> you know all these all this friction." Well, I didn't list that one that in Acts they were called the way. But think about why were they called the way? Showing the direction, right? <laughs> well, and I think Jesus said, "I'm the, I am the way." Remember yeah. when he said, "I mean, there's no doubt." It, my point is, I think a lot of people today, when they call themselves Christians, it's almost like a worldly yep. view of it. It, it. They're like, well, I'm a Christian. Because you're thinking, if you know them or have watched them, sometimes, you know how you have yeah. the thought, you're like, well, you could have fooled me. <laughs> or you're shocked. If somebody says, I'm a Christian, you're like, really? It does. I never would have guessed that. I never. Well, you know, that's not a good thing. If your lifestyle yeah. is not, not not jiving with your identity, if your lifestyle, if it's not there, no. But it's you, almost like a belief system that, well, I believe at one point in my life. It's proven. Well, it's, like the, it's like the tweet I saw from the guy that he's a senator from Georgia. And he said, you know, being a pro-choice pastor, and he goes on with the rest of his stuff. And I thought, yeah. hmm. That's an oxymoron there. How are yeah. you? How are you gonna? How are you gonna uh, take that and square that up? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> shallow. So, yeah, because because God is life. Yeah, but so what I was gonna say. So you have. I mean, you could throw in the way. You have disciples. I like Phil's ambassadors. Now in the text here, you'll be surprised. In Col I mean Colossians, yeah, one two. I mean, he first says, Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, mm -hmm. by the will of God. We're going to talk about that later. Yep. And Timothy, our brother, to the holy 
and faithful brothers in Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. So I looked at this word holy. It's actually, you'll find this fascinating. The same word, because a lot of versions, when I just read that, a lot yeah. of people listening, it doesn't say holy. You right. know what it says? Saint. Yeah. Saints. So I live in Louisiana. I'm real familiar with the saints. <laughs> However, if you look at the football team, they're they're I'm not sure they're saints. <laughs> not very saints. <laughs> Which it made me think this. Now That's the reason why your lifestyle has to go with the, 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 the yeah. with your identity. Yeah, we're the saints. Because <laughs> got... hang on, Jess, let's take a break. So why would someone say I want to pay a couple of hundred bucks a month more? For my car or add a grand to my mortgage every month or pay higher interest rate on my credit cards. Would anybody want to do that? I don't think so. We've uh, been talking about a group called Scoremaster for quite a while, and um, they have what they call the three-week rule, and that's uh, that you wait for you apply for a mortgage, buy a car, or apply for a credit card until you can get that credit score bumped up. That's how they're going to help you. They, uh, on average, add 61 points uh, to your credit score in just three weeks, and that allows you to get a lower interest rate. So when you do have to purchase that large item, you don't want to be paying more than you have to. And so uh, they optimize your credit score. The less you pay in interest, the more you're going to save in the long term, especially right now with all this inflation going on. So we want you to check these guys out. If you're going to make that purchase, you get three weeks to, to run that score up a little bit higher. Go to scoremaster.com slash fill that's scoremaster.com slash fill and they're going to help you to be able to get that number up and get a lower interest rate and save you some money over the long run scoremaster.com slash fill i got to looking at this now now just to prove my point here in verse four we have the same word it says now, three says, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. And your love. And the love you have for all the saints. Saints. But, same but Greek it's word. the same word in verse two, where it says, to the saints yeah. and faithful. Now, for some reason, the NIV, and they did it several times, because I, I looked at it last night for like an hour. And, and, and holiness is part of of that I think that is the definition, right. which is it's remember the passage we read, I think it's Second Corinthians seven, where he said, you know, you, you purify yourselves, perfect in holiness. So mm -hmm. so there's a putting off of the old man and then there's a putting on of the new man. God sets you apart to do holy things. Right. He he made you clean. So but he calls them he calls us saints, which we don't use that anymore. I'm saying outside of the football team, which has nothing to do with holiness. It's about throwing a football. Because I think the world has changed this. When we think of a saint, we're thinking of some specially commissioned person in right. religion. Right, which the Catholic Church does. They recognize usually people of the past um, – with like special significance, but you're right. I mean, biblically, it seemed like it applied to anybody that's set apart, right? Well, I hope so, because <laughs> it too. says, because we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. Now, are we trying to say that's just a small group of people, which is my point was maybe they changed to number two to holy because they're they think that saints are only a few specially commissioned people, right? But I'm just here to tell you, go there's, look it up. There's more. To the saints. By the way. And you... faithful. It, he was writing to people who were faithful. And when you look at faithful, there's a little letter. And it says, believers. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh. I was just going to say, the only way you can achieve holiness is through Christ. So if you're thinking somehow out here that you can make yourself a saint or make yourself holy, not going to happen. Thank no. you. That That's where I was going next. Because look at 12, you have the same word. Get, the reason I, I went down this road is because it was mentioned so many times. I mm -hmm. thought it was noteworthy that we no longer call ourselves saints, 
Because it's not based on our our ability. So so look at verse 12. It's used again. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints. There it is again. Well, is this some, is that us or is that some, we just don't think about it. The word just rolls right off your head. Right. And then we say, oh, no, I'm not a saint. I'm a Christian. Oh, well, wait a minute here. He, he <laughs> Saint Christian, sounds like it's better. <clears throat> way better. Christians only mentioned three times that it was in a worldly context. Mm-hmm. So even Peter, I think he was saying, if you suffer as a Christian, because the people who are in the world that's going to cause you suffer, suffering, they're viewing you as a Christ man. You're Oh, you're following some man, Jesus. Right. Ha <laughs> ha. So, all right, well, there it is again. Well, then look in 22. comes up again. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight. Believe it or not. Same Greek word. Saints. Yep. To present you as saints in his holy sight without blemish and free from accusation. Hmm. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> uh, so, I just I got excited when I read this. I mean, I know we're in the deep water here. So look in verse twenty six. I mean, now it's getting now it's getting powerful because he in twenty five he says I've become a servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations but is now disclosed to the saints. Hmm. Well, I better be a saint or I'll never will figure it out. <laughs> That's it. That's right. Well, what is this mystery? The mystery to, to them, to them, who's them? The saints. Mm-hmm. God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So was that five times in one, one two, chapter? three, four, five in the first chapter. It's worthy of note. That's what I agree. So now just to back up on our list. So we have ambassadors. We have the way. We have disciples. We have, Here we have saints. But we also have the faithful. He says to the holy, to the saints and faithful. Well, what is faithful? And also in the margin, it says believing. Right. So believers. And I yep. put slash believe. But what is faithful? It's people who believe and are full of faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, full of faith. It, it, but isn't it interesting, Jay, how that word got changed over time? Because in the modern era, if you said there's a faithful brother... What are they meaning when they say that? Well, he shows up to stuff. He, you know, he participates. I mean, you know, it's always really, it's always linked to something people can see active, which is not a bad lifestyle. Thing. Lifestyle, which is not a bad thing, but but really, the word means what they what you believe, and are you willing to hold on to that belief, right? And I it's mean, on a daily, but yeah, it's deeper than and which because you could show up to some place. And really not believe. I mean, I've seen it happen before. I've seen people say, you know, I sit here 20 years, but I don't have any faith. Well, and, and you're Some right. groups come along and they're not known for faithfulness, but they are known for friction. True. <laughs> yeah, the yeah within faithful. the body. And he alludes to that when you get over in chapter three and all that. Yeah. You know, he's saying, look, you know, be quick, you know, therefore is chosen people. Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You you, you can't be like a, a out of out of touch, bombastic type. You know, I've been guilty of it many a time. Oh yeah, me too. You, just, you, you need to keep an even keel in your lifestyle. Plus, you have you go. To, no matter what, you have to have a deep deep conviction about who Jesus is. Oh. And it's not just going through the motions because, I mean, let's face it, we, we've tagged that faithful term on people, but faith is at the heart of faithfulness, and that's yeah. that's what you believe, and what you believe dictates what you do and who you are. Let's yeah. take another break for you. Get in. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, saying, calling yourself faithful, that's a mouthful. Mm. Being full of faith. Yeah. I mean, it, that's hard. It's oh, hard yeah. to live life full yeah. of faith. And, and, you know, we always give the definition, faith is being sure of what we hope for. And there's a lot being discussed here about hope. Yep. And certain of what we don't see. <clears throat> and what makes that so difficult, because you think about most things in life from an earthly standpoint, hope camouflages itself a lot of times into disappointment. You just think about how many times you or other people have put all their hopes in either amassing wealth or mm -hmm. climbing the mountain or whatever it is. And then when they actually get it or do it, it it's underwhelming. Yeah. It didn't, or saying, you know, it's like people who say, you know, we're moving because of whatever the problem, because it's a, it's an act of hope. We're, yeah. we're hoping that if we move, this will fix our problems and we'll just have a fresh start. Well, then they move and it's a disaster. Yeah. So hope just literally dashed them to pieces. Or you could and, say, I've seen it before with couples where they split up and they say, well, I guess I married the wrong person. I hope this, I hope my next one turns out better. And usually it doesn't because the same problems you had in the first relationship, you're taking the second. You could even go it before and say, you're dating a person, say, I hope they change the way they do go. this. Right. Nope. nope. It got worse. <laughs> so hope dashed you again. That's, right. that, that's why I'm saying. So here we are putting our faith. We're, we're full of belief and assurance. Ultimately, uh, what's the verse where it says, this is our hope, the appearing of Jesus? Where's it, Titus 2, uh, where it says, because I think you have to really define hope. No, you're right. Be because it is it's not really pile, pile dis Anna. disappointing. Uh, I think yeah, it's the we, that's Colossians 2.13. Colossians 2.13? That don't seem right. Yep, 2.13. Uh, it, While we Titus, wait, Titus two thirteen. Yeah, Titus two thirteen. Yeah, read it, Phil. No, you know, uh, the Starts grace with, yeah. of God teaches us a lesson, brings salvation. It's appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness. There's your lifestyle mm -hmm. and worldly passions. There's your lifestyle, and here's the way you roll. And to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait. <laughs> For this blessed hope, the, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, He gave Himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness yeah. and to I purify mean that, Himself a people that are who are His very own, eager to do what is good. Yeah, that's the verse I was looking for. I should have wrote that down because I read it last night. But and that's where you see how personal it is. He He calls us people of His very own, but our hope, because hope is tricky. It can be very disappointing. Yep. You know. You know. I've. I look. You know how many times I've told my kids or told friends or been in a situation, and I'll say, "Hope's not a plan." <laughs> you know, I'll tell them that. They're like, "Well, I hope I can work it out once I get up there." I was like, <laughs> "Hope's not a plan." <laughs> and they're like, "Well, what happened to this faith, hope, and love?" Uh, you know. <laughs> they I'm start like, putting no, the verse back on it. Hope is a man that's the son of God. Now that is hope because. It's a guarantee. Yeah. That's going to happen. And by the way, that's a pretty good plan. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a plan that is from a man who came from God or yeah. is God who has produced yeah. in the past. And they're like, what do you mean he produced? He came back from the dead. Yeah. If you come back from the dead, then I'll... <laughs> <laughs> I'll entertain this plan. <laughs> you can do whatever I'm you want to. I'm getting into child rearing 101, but you know I've said that a thousand times. It's like I cannot stand it if one of my kids says, "I'm going to move over here, and I hope it works out." I was like, "That's not a plan." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. It's a gamble. <laughs> it's just a thing. It's like, funny. That's my my we're... my similar thing to my kids, and still is to my grandkids. Is your lack of preparation is not my crisis. Yeah. Because they'll come in and say, oh, I got to, you know, this has happened. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Your lack of prep is not, I'm not going into crisis mode for this situation. You fix all it. All right. But having said all that, this is different. 
What we have in Jesus is guaranteed. It is something we can be faithful to. It is a plan. It is a plan. Yep. And so you have one exception to the hope rule as far as yeah. of thinking that. And this won't be disappointing like every other right. hope that you have. Because think about it. How, where, what happens to our hopes, hopes and dreams on earth if you take out Jesus? What happens to them eventually? Eventually you're disappointed. You're disappointed or you die. Yeah. They oh, die. I, yeah. I mean, it's like what the famous what? line said, when you people come to Tiger Stadium for their hopes to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the last mile <laughs> where Great, hopes come to line. die. <laughs> so I want to get this last one before we finish. So the, but he also says brothers. Now, most of the translations say brethren here. So you look it up. I mean, there's a lot he says, saints. Faithful, you know, full of hope, full of believers. But here he says, brothers. Ours says, most says, oh, yeah. brethren, but it's brothers and sisters. Well, how powerful is that? Let, let's just think about that. Why is that a powerful statement? Because it implies family. It implies family. And when you throw in, when he gets over here, something we've read many times already in this, Colossians 3, here, there's no, and he, he starts labeling all these categories. There's no yep. nationality. There's no social class. The division part. There's no circumcised or uncircumcised. Many other places. You know, Even in Galatians, he said there's no male or female. There, Christ is all and is in all and we're brothers and sisters in that which and it was really interesting jason you think about it because jesus himself who is god put himself into a role being called our brother because of his humanity he's not ashamed to call him brothers exactly Thank so you. That's powerful. Oh, because I mean, so you're talking about the creator of the universe has said, "Now we're all we're in the same family. Yep. You're your brothers and sisters. I am your father. I mean, that's how we roll." Yep. I, mean, that's I had pretty... a couple thoughts about that. Hey, um, let's take our last break. So, if you think about who have you fought with the most in your life, brothers. Your actual brothers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, That's right. Now, my best friends are my brothers. Yep. I mean, I got three of them and a sister now. Although I haven't had many fights with her, but no, we we've only been together for a couple of years, so give it time. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you'll find something. But my point is, you know, when you spend time. Those who you spend the most time with, you you have the most difficult with. Sure, because you're spending time. It's like marriage. That's why people get. Well, so especially good. when you grow up together, through all your immaturity and your imperfections and everything that happens well, as a child, and your parents. In this case, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> talk about you while you're in the room. In our early early days, y'all didn't set us a platform to succeed early on. You know, so that caused more. It took strife. a while it, to yeah. catch up. Yeah, yeah you got there. But it, <laughs> as Miss Kay would put it, she wrote me a note while she was traveling. You know, you know, we've been together 61 years. And she said, yes, there was some bungling on the way, but it was worth every minute. <laughs> so she used the word bungling. Huh? Bungling. Uh, that's pretty that's pretty crappy for mom. Yeah. Well, I say that we survived yeah. the bungles. I say that too, because a lot of people, you know, we're carrying around this baby and, and uh, we're trying to stand in the gap. But they always say, like, well, what's your what's your plan? Well, once again, I'm not going to say, well, I hope it all works out. Yep. I said, I think God has one. Yep. And we're I'm waiting to see what it is. I don't know what it is, but I know this. It's a great way to look at for it. For every day that I have this child under my care, I'm going to put him in the best position to succeed, yeah. to have success, even to the appealing to the supernatural world. I mean, Missy sings him a different worship song every day. Yeah. She prays over him. She reads the word to him. You're like, well, this baby can't understand that. Well, yeah, to the common man, that may seem silly. But to us who are faithful, that's all That's all the plan we got. Yeah. So that's, that's what we're going with. And so 
I wanted to bring that up about the brothers and sisters. That doesn't mean, I mean, it means you're part of something bigger than the planet. What's even bigger than the physical family. Remember when Jesus, I'm not sure where it is off the top of my head, but they, you know, they're in a circle and somebody taps him on the shoulder. I'm, I'm reading between the lines here. Yeah. And they say, hey, your, your brother and mother are here. And he said, no, that I'm with my mother, mother and brothers. And people say, like, how dare he say that? I mean, he was his family. He was making a greater point. Yeah, I want them to be my mother and brothers too, right. sisters too. But don't underestimate the power of being in the brotherhood of an eternal destiny with an eternal God. I mean, that's the bigger, because then it would just be a temporary relationship. Right. Which so. is what I always say about, <clears throat> you know, the idea of heaven you think about your relationship with your wife as your sister. I mean, she's your wife and on earth, that's a unique relationship. You raise a family. In your case, mom and dad, are you're our patriarchs, matriarch of our family. But in heaven, it'll be different because we won't, we won't need to procreate and, you know, build families like we did on earth. But if you didn't have a relationship with your wife as your sister, Think about what you would miss out on in eternity. Ice I mean, Knight was a good, a good example of a car wreck. Some irate woman sideswiped about four vehicles. One man was killed. One baby severely injured. The son of one of our sisters was in one of the cars yep. and was sideswiped. And he and she called Miss Kay up and she said, I'm calling you because you're the only mother that I have. Yeah. Her mother lives far away. Right. So while they're here, Miss Kay interacts with them all the time. He was a he's a basketball player. He's about sixteen, seventeen. But he had broke about three ribs and punctured a lung. Punctured a lung. But you say, Well, where is Miss Kay right now? Well, she's there now. Yeah. She's it's it was it's it's a community of believers, right. saints. So, you know, I see them every Sunday morning up there. And this was the same family that we mentioned a couple of podcasts ago. This is from the same family we mentioned. That's an African American family, but we're all in the same family. That's it. And when some so, something happens, that's what we. That's what brothers. Miss Kay said she called me her mother when she called her. She said she Miss Kay squalling. You know. Oh, I know she called me crying. Oh, yeah. which gets back to the religion that God used. But I love he, that about mom. I love that her yeah, heart one of is the touched. Believers, religion that one God, of the believers is hurt. Yeah. Well, we all hurt. Right. You know. That's why we read the verse: "Religion that God views as." Pure and faultless. Right. It's looking after widows and orphans. That's right. But I want to read this. Uh, I mentioned it. I found it. Matthew 12, 46. When Jesus was talking to the crowd, his mother and brother stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone said, hey, your brother and mother are standing outside wanting to talk to you. He replied to them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here or my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the, and I like, oh, that's why I want to read it, does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So you fast forward to Colossians. Here's Paul, and in verse 1, he says he's an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God. And here he mentions his brother Timothy. Mm -hmm. They're part of Jesus. There's a brotherhood in here. Brotherhood, sisterhood, motherhood, fatherhood. To the holy and faithful brothers in Christ. I think it's a powerful thing. Yep. That, yep. That, and that's why I asked you the names. That's close kin. And, and to, to go back to the point of we fight with our brothers, yes. And Jesus offers forgiveness, a way to begin again. I, I'm saying if this is that being a part of this brotherhood, a bar, part of the church as members, not some building or it. It is bumpy. We do have conflict. We have to learn how to get along, and that's why we have the Spirit of God. It, it's all part of it. You think, what's a man's biggest struggle? It usually involves the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. But I think that's why he's so adamant about viewing them as your sister. Correct. Because when you have that mindset, it's way easier to overcome the temptation to try to do something unholy yep. in Jesus with your sister. 
Yep. Which is, which is what I tell a lot of young men <clears throat> that have come to me in the past struggling with, you know, lustful thoughts or pornography or things that a lot of pe- a lot of men struggle with. And I always tell them, look, even these people that are they're filmed and, and they're in these situations where they're they're being paid money to do these things or, or just even if they just look a certain way, you know, that's someone's daughter. Someone's yeah. sister. Yeah. Probably maybe someone's mom. Yep. And you know, if you if you if you don't break them down as not being a real human being right. and, and a potential sister of yours in Christ, I mean, why would you leer? Well, in the Lord, yeah, them, you know, that is a sister or a potential sister, right? All right. So if you're if we wrapped it up, so we went through the way disciples now in our text, saints, faithful or believers, brethren or brothers and sisters, and the last one I wanted to mention is in 13 of Colossians when he says, and Phil, you mentioned this before we started because you were encouraging a, a fellow that was that's going to be baptized here later today. But you said you're going to be a member of the kingdom. But I know where you got that from. Your subconscious in Colossians 1, 13 says he has rescued us. This is right after he called us saints from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. Yep. We're kingdom inhabitants. I was king- trying to show him Our that king- his identity is fixing to change. Yeah, kingdom members. Kingdom, kingdom members. members. Yeah. How about that? So uh, we're out of time, but in the overtime, I'm going to explore a little more of that kingdom member. And then I want to tell a story about, a. I love that idea about Paul calling Timothy his brother because he also oh. calls him in Timothy his son which is interesting, the, the relationship. So the, the point is, the next time somebody says, are you a Christian? You say, I want you to jot these things. Let me tell you what I am. <laughs> I, have, a, have a seat. There. I'm that and much more. <laughs> <laughs> I like Jesus rabbit holes. I like them. All right, we'll see you on the other side in the overtime. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.